Right Shalawam. First and foremost, I want to give all praises and all glory to Yahaba Shmi Al Shai. I want to give double honors to the apostles of great mercy that do rule well. Salutations to the men of the hope land since I elect. It's my cousin from a chin that camp. Just want to do a little edification for the elect's sake. And the name of this lesson would be Jews and Greeks. Alright? And the reason I'm calling it Jews and Greeks because when they read the New Testament, and especially in church, they always believe that the Jews and the Greeks or the Jews and the Gentiles is talking about two different people talking about the israelites and talking about all other people that could you know that the Mosai had mercy on and now he's for every everyone which according to the scriptures is not so all right when you when you it, it have the bibles that we use now based off of we're called the masoretic text all right but when the bible was first translated into greek it was translated from the hebrew into the Greek, and they had it in a book, they call it the, the Greek Septuagint. All right? Because the, the, 70, the um, 70 translators that translated, Hebrew translators that translated the Bible from Hebrew to Greek. And it was more close. I think that was around, um, that was in the first century. It was translated during the first century. So it's the closest translation to the Hebrew. All right? When you go into the Masoretic text, it was translated over a thousand years after. All right, it, it, a lot of things were changing up. Things were changed to accommodate all people because it came after the whole explosion of the Roman Catholic Church, where the Roman Catholic Church or Roman Catholicism, you know, their their duties is bringing all people into one. All right. So the Bibles that we use now actually based off the Masoretic text, which a lot of things, a lot of words would have been changed up, just like Gentiles, Greek, and and um and Greek, Grecian, they would have taken out words and placed words so that it could accommodate all people. But in the beginning, it was not so. All right, so just want to go into this lesson real quick. Hope it edifying to the elect. This is Romans chapter 10, verse 12. For there is no difference between there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. So then when you read this, you're thinking that you know, yeah, the Greeks, the Greeks are white people. All right. The Greeks are white people and the Lord, Lord have mercy on all people because that is what they will tell you in church. The Lord love all people. The Lord love everybody. The Lord have mercy on all people. All people are going to make it in the kingdom of heaven, red and yellow, black and white, and we're going to live peacefully. There will be no war no more. The Lord love all people. Guess what? That is biblically incorrect. It is inaccurate. All right? I want to look up the word Greek. All right, this is Romans chapter 10, verse 12. Let's look up the word Greek because you have to go into words to understand what you're reading. All right, if you're reading us, let's say you're reading a, um, a book and there are key words, what you call big words, in, in, you know, in certain sentences or certain paragraphs, whatever the case might be, and you don't understand what these words mean, then you're not really understanding what the book about. And it's the same with the scriptures. That is why in 2 Corinthians 3 talk about the same veil untaken away. Because if you don't understand key events that happened and took place, talking about the Old Testament, because a lot of you church people, you, you pass the Old Testament straight. Basically, you only deal with Psalms. All right? The Bible for you is just inspiration, but that is not what the Bible is about. All right? That is not what the Bible is about. The Bible is about history and prophecies. And the identity of the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. <laughs> Alright? So, if you don't understand words in the scriptures, then you wouldn't understand what you're reading. Let's look up the word Greek. It says what? Helen. A Greek either by nationality, whether a native or mainland, or of the Greek island or colonies in a wider sense, the name embraces all nations, not Jews, that made that made the language, customs, and learning of Greek their own. Alright, so you see what they do here in the 
in the Blue Letter Bible. But the word there is Helen. So now let's look up the word Helen in the, Bi in the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. All right? Here I have Hellenist. All right? It says, Jews who made Greek their tongue, and it is often adopted. And with it had often adopted Greek ideas and practices. So the Hellens, when he says, for there is no difference between the Jews and the Hellens, the Jews were speaking of who? Of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and the Hellens were talking about the other tribes, which really was talking about the Jews that were scattered abroad because the other ten tribes, they were over on this side. But a remnant of them would have been there. But it mainly talking about the Jews that were scattered. All right? The Israelites that were scattered. All right? Because in 722 BC, Shamanazar took the house of Israel out, only leaving the house of Judah. And then they left and they came over on this side, the mass majority of them. So when Paul would have went onto the Greeks, onto the Hellens, onto the so-called Gentiles, he would have went onto Jews that were scattered. And in these last days, the word came unto all Israelites while the Lord said, Other sheep that I have which are not of this fold. All right? Those sheep, they came in in these last days. When all Israel fell away and now the Lord bringing all Israel back. The two houses of Israel. All right? So the word Greek there goes back to Helen, which is what? Jews who made Greek their tongue. And I will always make reference to Alexander Ty Julius Alexander Tiberius was a Roman general, was the actual Roman general that actually took down Israel in 70 AD, led by um, um, Vespasian and Titus. Vespasian and Domitian, all right? Well, Titus also, because he died during that time, and his brother um, Vespasian, um, um, Domitian, my bad, his brother Domitian, actually erected the Ark of Titus in, in honor of his name. All right? But it was actually taken down by a Roman general called Julius Alexander Tiberius. He was actually an Israelite that grew up under the Greek custom. It, it was said that his father refused to raise him as an Israelite. He rather raised him as a Greek. So think about these children growing up thinking that they are Greeks. Generations down the road, the, the generations, they're going to forget that they are Israelites. The same thing happened to us in these last days. We grew up as Greeks. We grew up as Trinidadians, as Barbadians, as Jamaicans, as Americans, as Europeans. Forgetting that we are, we are the true people of the book. Some of us think that we are Africans and we are not. All forgetting that, as the scripture said, forgot our resting place. It says, Jews that made Greek their language their tongue that's why paul said there's no difference between the jews and the greeks it's the same people there's no difference between americans and trinidadians there's no difference between trinidadians and venezuelans they're the same people there's no difference between the nigerians and the north american indians they are the same people israelites all right they are the same people all right this is Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 24. It says, Consider thou not what these people have spoken, saying, The two families, remember this, the two families, because in the Old Testament, you always hear about Israel and Judah. And in the New Testament, you start hearing about the Jews and the Greeks, or the Jews and the Gentiles. The same two. You always hear about two. All right? The two families which the Lord had chosen, the Lord Yahabah Hashim Yahashah had chosen, he had even cast them off. Thus they have despised my people that they should no more be a nation before them. And that is what they're doing. They're trying to dismember the nation by saying all people could come in and that we are not Jews, we are Africans and whatnot. But the Lord always had these two families and he's, gonna make, he's making them one in his hand again. The two families which the Lord had chosen, Israel and Judah. But when they were scattered, it was necessary that the Lord send the shepherds to gather them back in. In Luke 19.10, the Son of Man is come, is come to save that which is lost. To seek and to save that which was lost. 
all right i am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of israel that is who the lord was sent for all right he was sent to, to none other this is ezekiel chapter 11 verse 14 again the word of yahabah shimel shai came unto me saying son of man thy brethren even thy brethren the men of thy kindred and all the house of Israel holy are they unto whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said. So now the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the Jews, said unto the whole house of Israel, Get you far from the Lord. Unto us is this land given in possession. So it shows that the Jews didn't want to have nothing to do with the Israelites. Do with Israel, my bad. They didn't want to have nothing to do with Israel, which Israel is the northern tribe from, from um, Reuben all the way down to Issachar. And the southern tribe, which is Judah, or which represented as Jerusalem, is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. All right? It says, Therefore, they, um, therefore say, Thus saith Yahweh Hashem Shai, although I have cast them afar off among the heathen, and all that have scattered them among the Gentiles, yet will I be unto them a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Where they shall come. So the Lord said that he scattered Israelites all over. So he, basically we tell in Jerusalem, hey, don't have a problem with your brothers. Because he's going to bring them back. And that is the reason why the Jews had all problems with Paul when Paul was going on to the, the so-called Gentiles. It was prophesied here in Ezekiel. But he said what? They said it unto Israel. Not unto the Gentiles. The Lord never prophesied that he's going to bring the Gentiles in. Whatever the Lord going to do, he always prophesied about it. Where is the prophecy where the Lord said he's going to bring the Gentiles in? This is a prophecy right here. Where the Lord speaks about the Gentiles. This is Lamentation 1 verse 10. The adversary had spread out his hands upon all her pleasant things. For she had seen that the heathen entered into her sanctuary. In church, the, the heathen entered in. Unto whom thou commanded that they should not enter into thy congregation. So when did the Lord change and say the heathen could now enter into the congregation? When this New Testament speaks about the Israel for Jews and, and Israel, um, and the Helen, Jews and Greeks, Jews and Grecian, Jews and Gentiles. It was talking about the Jews and the Israelites that were scattered. Alright? The Jews and the Israelites that were scattered abroad. And it says that what? The, the people of Jerusalem, the Jews that were in Jerusalem, they had a problem with it. We could have said, get you far from us. This is Acts 13 verse 45. I said verse 44. And the next Sabbath day. Um, I said verse 42. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought these words that they might be preached unto them, them the next Sabbath day. The Gentiles were speaking about the, the Jews that were scattered. And you see going down. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes, the proselytes talk about converts, so they came back. The scriptures in Acts in um, Ch Isaiah chapter 1 talk about Jews, the converts of Jerusalem. All right? Followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of Yahweh. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of Yahweh. But when the Jews saw the multitude, they were filled with envy. They were filled with envy going back to, to, to Ezekiel chapter 11. Didn't the Lord say go move you with envy with a hypocritical nation? He talked about the, the Israelites that were scattered. They were filled with envy going back to Ezekiel chapter 11 when they said, get you far from us. They, the Jews in Jerusalem said unto the Israelites that were scattered, get you far from us. Basically, we don't want no part of you. He said they were moving envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas wax bold. Now let's 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 not look at this from a perspective that 
we understand the scriptures so we would say just like the writer is saying here in acts that the, the Jews, they were blaspheming and contradicting because they both blaspheming to speak a lie against the Holy Spirit. All right? So let's look at it as we are bystanders looking in and we have no idea what's going on. They have the apostles speaking here and it have the, the Jews speaking here and both against another. Who would we pick? According to Acts chapter 11, verse 19, it said, They that were of Berea were more noble than they of Thessalonica because they searched the scriptures to see if those things were true. So how would you know who contradicting and who blaspheming? Search the scriptures. And that is what they don't do in church. They don't search the scriptures to see what they're saying is contradicting and blaspheming to the scripture, that the, to the words of the Most High. You are contradicting and blaspheming the scriptures, the words of the Mosai when you say that all people could come in, that the Mosai is for all people. It says, For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light to the Gentiles, to be a light to the Gentiles, and that thou shouldest be for the salvation to the end of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of Yahweh. And as many as them were ordained to eternal life, believed. They believed. All right? Because why? Because the, it, was, it was ordained for them to believe in this word. And it prophesied in, in, in Ezekiel 11 that the Israelites, they're going to have problem with the Jews that were scattered. They're going to have a problem with them. They didn't want to have nothing with them. But the Jews that were scattered, they were called Greeks. They were called Gentiles. Because why? Because as we read Helen, they took the Greek custom. So basically, let's, live, let's say in America, the Americans would call us down here, they would call us Trinidadians. They wouldn't, they wouldn't call us this. They wouldn't say we the same people. They call us Trinidadians. Because we have a, a different culture than them. All right? Just like, but if we was keeping their culture, then they would call us America, but we not. All right? And it's the same thing that was happening back then. The Israelites that were scattered among the Greeks that were keeping the Greek customs, they called them by different names. They didn't call them Israelites. They didn't call them Israelites. All right? Let me just read this real quick. This is um this is Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5, verse 13. Then was Daniel brought in before the king. And the king spake and said unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel, which art of the children of the captivity of Judah? Unto whom the king my father brought out of Jewry. So here is the first incident where you see the word Jew being used. So now people say the Jews are the chosen people on the most side. The Jews, the Jews, everything is the Jews. But guess what? The Jews were speaking about who? The captivity of Judah. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Let's, let's look it up. Let's look it up. Let's prove it. The scripture said prove all things. This is Daniel 5 and 13. Let's look up the word jury. Let's look up the word jury. All right? Jury. What? Judah, the territory of the tribe of Judah. All right? So it's inter interchangeable. Jury, Judah, Judea. So they speak about the Jews. You're only speaking about three tribes. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. All right? That's who you are speaking about. Let's go into translations. Let's see what they said in different translations. The King James Version has Jewry. The New King James Version has Judah. All right? The NASB. Judah. Judah. ASV. Judah. The DBY. Judah. HNV. Yahawada. Which is the Hebrew name. Yahawada is in the Hebrew name of, of, of Judah. Here we have Judah again. All right? Here we have Judah again. So the, the reason why I brought that out is to show that when the word Jew is being mentioned, the word Jew 
is used to refer to Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, not all Israel. And going back to the um, Zondervan Bible Dictionary, let's look at the word Jew. Originally, originally it donated one belonging to the tribe of Judah or to the two tribes or to the two tribes of the southern kingdom. Which Judah and Benjamin and Levi would have been there, but Levi wouldn't have had a territory. Levi didn't have a land for themselves. They were mixed among the nations. So that is why it said, all to the two tribes of the southern kingdom. All right? So the word Jew represents Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Because during the time of, of um, Rehoboam and Jeroboam, what Jeroboam did, he cast out all the Levi and sent them back to Jerusalem and made, I think, Gadites priests. All right? So the Jews, the Jews at that time consisted of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi which were only speaking about three tribes, not all Israel. Here it says, originally donated to one belonging of the, two of the tribe of Judah or to the two tribes of the southern kingdom. It says, 2 Kings 16, 6, 25 and 25. It says, but later, the meaning extended. The meaning was extended and it was applied to anyone of the Hebrew race who returned from the captivity. All right? So now it, 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 it represented as all Israel. Now, when it was written back then, the Jews were talking about Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Israel were over on this side. The Israelites, or the, all, all the 12 tribes are Israelite, but Israel is represented as the 10 tribes that were scattered, the, 10, the lost 10 tribes. They were over on this side. The Jews represented as Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. But the Grecians. They were, the majority of them were Jews that were scattered. Throughout all the persecutions and all the captivities, they were scattered. When you read Acts chapter 2, you will see all the nations that they were scattered in and adopted their, their traits. Hence the reason when you go back to Nehemiah 13, you will see the reason why Nehemiah had a problem with them. Because the children, they were growing up basically not knowing they were Israelites. They couldn't speak Hebrew. All right? And that is what was happening to when Israel was scattered. And that is the reason why the Jews didn't want to have nothing to do with the Jews, with the other Jews that were scattered, who were called Gentiles, who were called Greeks, who were called Grecians. So the Greeks and the Jews are the same people. That is why the Lord said, put no difference between them. All right? Going back. This is Acts chapter 19. Um, chapter 19 is 10. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwell in Asia heard the word of the Lord, of Yah uh, Lord Yahushai, both Jews and Greeks. And the word there for Greeks again is who? Helen. Jews that got that um, um, that adopted the, the Greek custom. All right? Jews that adopted the Greek custom. All right? This is Acts 11 verse 19. Now when, now they which was scattered abroad upon the persecution rose about. All right? So the Jews were scattered. Here's the reason Acts um. In Ezekiel 11, it says, What do they been scattered throughout all the Gentiles? He could be a small sanctuary unto them where they come. So the Lord gathered them back. Stephen traveled as far as Phoenix and Cyprus and Antioch. These were all Greek places in Asia, which was called Anatolia back then, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. Why was he speaking to the Jews only? Because it's only for Israel. It's only for Israel. It says, and some of them, here it says, and some of them were men of Cyprus, men of Cyrene. Let's look up Cyprus. Let's look up Cyprus because, you know, people might say that, hey, look at have Africans and, and other Greeks. All right. Let's look up Cyprus. Let's look up Cyprus and then we look up Cyrene. All right. Let's look up Cyprus. 
um, Cyprus, Copper, an island in the eastern part of the Mediterranean Sea off the coast of Syria and Sicilia, 148 miles long and about 40 miles across, rich in copper deposits. In the pre-Christian era, a large colony of Jews settled there. So that is it. The men that were from Cyprus were Israelites because Jews were scattered throughout all day. Now let's look at Cyrene. Let's go to Cyrene. Here's Cyrene. Cyrene here. Wall. A Libyan city in North Africa, west of Egypt, from with this way, this way, because when you look at the, at, you know, biblical movies, they show Yahweh the Shah as a white man, but then they show Simon of Cyrene as a dark-skinned man. To say, well, hey, look at African heavy Lord. Nah, guess what? They were both dark skin because they were both Israelites. Israel was dark skin. All right. Um, separated by the Libyan desert, it was situated some 2,000 feet above the Mediterranean, from which it was 10 miles distant. The coastline afforded the natural shelter from the heat of the Sahara. It is protected by the steps of the um, descending ranges about 80 miles to the south. The fertility of the climate of the city are delightful and productive. Cyrene is not mentioned in the Old Testament but becomes important in the New Testament. A native of Cyrene, Simon by name, was impressed, was in, was impressed by the Roman soldiers to carry the cross of Yahushai. Um, Luke 23, 26, does Simon um, immortalize his city? There were also um, representatives of his city present in Jerusalem upon the day of the Pentecost. Why? Because all Israelite men are supposed to come back to Israel for the Passover, for the Pentecost, and for the, um, and for the Feast of Tabernacles. Hence the reason Simon was there during the... During the um, during the Passover, the Lord died on the Passover. Hence the reason he was there because he came back for the feast. Going down, it says, its Jewish population warranted a synagogue. So they had Jews that were living in Cyrene. It had a large population of Jews living in Cyrene. And when they of Antioch, Antioch is, 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 is Greek colonies also. It says, speak unto the Grecians, Preaching the, 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 preaching the Lord Yahweh Shai. So they preached to the Jews that were in those places. They preached to the Jews who were called Greeks in those places. The Hellens or the Grecians. He said, my son, going on again. This is Acts 21. Acts 21, verse 27. And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews, which were of Asia, when they saw him in the temple, stood up all the people and laid hands on him. The Jews of, were of Asia. It had Jews that were scattered all about. So if the Lord is for all people, and from reading here, it shows that Paul went on to the Jews, and Stephen and Barnabas went on to the Jews that were scattered throughout Asia Minor, which are only three tribes. What about the other tribes of Israel? What about the ten tribes? So did the Lord forget about the ten tribes of Israel and bringing in all the other nations? What the scripture said? That the Lord cast off his people which he foreknew. knew? The how forbid. The Lord had not cast off his people. All right, there's the final precept here. This is Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 3. For lo, the days come, saith Yahabah Shemiah Shai, that I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah. Jeremiah was during the Babylonian time, and guess what? It had no time. The scripture said Israel and Judah was, was oppressed together. The only time Israel and Judah was in captivity together is right here, right now. So Jeremiah 30 is actually speaking about the captivity that we in right now that we're going to be delivered from. Right? 
For lo, the days come, saith Yahabah Shimei Shai, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith Yahweh, and I will cause them to return from to the land that I gave their fathers, and they shall possess it. All right. And these are the words that Yahweh speak concerning Israel and concerning Judah, concerning Israel and concerning the Jews. Or concerning the Jews and concerning the Greeks. So that you can understand. The Jews and the Greeks are the same people. They are one. They are both Israelites. They are both Israelites. They are not two different nations. Alright. So I hope it was edifying. I'm going to give all praises to Yahabah, Shimei, and Oshai. Give double honor to the apostles of great mercy. Now do rule well. Salutations to the men of the whole land. Sing say like. This is Makazar from the train that comes in Shalawam. Stay strong. Until next time, say Shalawam.